So let's start with a brief overview of what goes into a data breach response process. So normally when an enterprise experiences a data breach, you know, the first folks they're calling is, you know, their cyber insurance uh, and their outside counsel law firm. Um, and so it's really the outside counsel as we've seen it that is quarterbacking the data breach response process, uh, unless of course the enterprise is self-insured. So the outside counsel, you know, from our experience has been the party that is uh, engaging the review uh, the review vendors, assisting with the preparation of notification report. And uh, you know, basically the, the, the main reason that uh, law firms are brought in so, uh, so early is to cloak the breach response process under a veil of uh, you know, attorney client privilege. So there's a lot of moving parts to this process and a lot of different players. So let me give a brief explanation uh, on where TechSIQ uh, fits in in this process. So after a breach uh, has been established, uh, a company will then often hire, uh, you know, their security consultants or forensics, digital forensics investigators. So these are your you know, fire eyes of the world, uh, maybe the crowd strikes to figure out exactly which data sources or databases have been compromised. Uh, but once that process has been accomplished, um, it then passes off to, uh, you know, legal um, and the outside counsel law firm to determine, hey, who actually is in the uh, data breach populations and what sort of notification requirements uh, are mandated uh, under regulations. And where TechSIQ's technology fits in is in that assessment process. So once the breach data population has been established, there's this whole extremely painful process of figuring out exactly what PI is in there, exactly who is in there, tying it back to the individual and creating that notification report. So this is a you know a process that can take teams of lawyers or uh, or contractors weeks, uh, if not months, to accomplish. Uh, but we found a way to automate this using AI. We're extremely excited to show you how we're doing that. So let's talk about some of the pain points uh, of these status quo processes. So how are people normally um, doing data breach response. So it's generally through a combination of manual document review, search terms, and regular expression search. Now, you know, there's a couple of key challenges with these status quo processes and solutions. Uh, number one is, of course, a high number of false positives. So you're, you end up looking at a lot of junk that isn't actually PII. And in that uh, and you know, as a result of that, you end up having to look at a lot more documents than you actually uh, should. And that you know, makes the process extremely inefficient, results in high number of uh, you know, billable hours. Uh, and once you actually find the documents with PII, not only do you have to tag it and, and identify it on the token level, but you also have to link it back to the individual that the PII belongs to. So if I see a document that contains Joe Smith and his SSN, I have to manually type in Joe Smith and then mention, okay, this is his particular SSN and do that for every single page of every single document. Uh, and when we're talking about data breaches that are covering hundreds of thousands, if not millions of documents, uh, this can get extremely manual and inefficient. And even when you finish this process, uh, you might run into a handful, if not more, of these huge bulk Excel documents that just create bottlenecks for the pipeline. Uh, we've had law firm partners and clients tell us that you know everything is going swimmingly until you know the last uh, you know, last week or so when they just come up against even a handful of of these large Excel's with hundreds of thousands of rows that just bottleneck the entire process. And then finally, once you finish the review and the extraction. You then have to go through quite a grueling deduplication process of the data subjects of these individuals to make sure, hey, you're not uh, notifying the same individual twice just because they appear on multiple different documents. So this is a process that is also extremely painful. And so as you as you all know, you know, for data breach, there's all these sort of pain points and these are the key uh, issues that we're addressing. And then I'll show you uh, how we're addressing them in our software. But ultimately, these issues create uh, huge bottlenecks, result in high turnaround times, uh, and really, really expensive data breach response processes. 
So before we hop into the software, uh, I want to briefly um, you know, explain exactly what value proposition we're bringing here. Um, and the value proposition we're bringing here is threefold. So uh, reduced cost due to increased efficiency, reduced turnaround time, uh, and increased accuracy. So in one of our projects, you know, we had a, a fairly large data breach um, where it was around 100,000 large Excel and PDF files. And all of these Excels were essentially employee uh, spreadsheets of tons of SSNs, hundreds of thousands of rows, et cetera. So when we worked with uh, you know, our, our law firm partner on this, it would have taken them uh, with a team of three or four dozen reviewers at least a month, if not more, to turn this around. Using our technology, they were able to complete this uh, response process end to end in less than two weeks. So they were able to accomplish it in 12 days. In addition, uh, sampling some of our, uh, you know, our AI's predictions, they were able to determine we had essentially a 100% accuracy rate to you know, miss zero uh, documents with PII. And what this resulted in was a process that it would have cost them uh, nearly half a million dollars uh, of, of manual you know, uh, billable hours. It instead was able to, uh, we were able to achieve uh, over a 75% efficiency, efficiency gain and reduce the cost by you know, 75% to around $125,000. So massive cost savings, massive time savings and, and quite a significant accuracy improvement as well. So with that, let me go ahead and hop into our software demo. So our platform is a, a, a self-service platform. You know, we deploy very flexibly. We can do on-premise, we can do over the cloud. Um, and what we do is have our uh, users log in. So this could be uh, somebody who is a contract reviewer at a law firm. Um, it could be a paralegal if the, uh, if the company is doing in-house, maybe it could be someone in their security department, but they would log in and the first thing they would see is our project management dashboards. So an overview of what sort of progress has been made so far, um, how many documents have been processed, what sort of documents have been found, is it email, is it PDF? And you can also get a good sense of your reviewer performance. So how many reviewers do I have? How many edits are they making per day? You know, what sort of uh, progress are they making? And you can also get a good sense of the quality control that's going on here as well. So uh, how many times has the machine been uh, corrected and what sort of corrections have been made? So great view for the project lead to get a sense of the, uh, the progress. The next thing I want to show you uh, as a part of our software is our document report. So from the instant that we get that we receive and process the data within eight to 24 hours, uh, TechSecQ's AI is able to uh, produce a report like what you see on the screen right now, which we call our document report. Now, what this is, is a report of every single document that appears in the breach data population, along with which individuals appear in there and how many instances of PII and what those PII are within each document. So for example, you know, document number two on eight, it's an email that contains one individual and two types of PII of which include this address. And so on day one of the project uh, or, or, or on day one of the analysis start date, you're able to get a sense of, hey, if there are a million documents that were breached, how many documents actually contain PII? Is it half the documents? Is it a tenth of the documents? And within those documents, how many individuals could be affected? Is it, are we talking about, you know, a thousand individuals? Or are we talking about a hundred thousand? So on the first day of analysis, you're able to get this, um, this initial sense of the scope and therefore, you know, uh, plan the timeline and the budgeting of this response process accordingly. And then throughout the, uh, the human QC portion of this, uh, of this technology, um, this report is actually updating live as the humans are QCing the machine. And what that ultimately results in is what we're seeing here, which is the individual's report. So you can think of this as the notification report, 
um, that ultimately is used to notify each of the affected individuals. And so what this is, is essentially an, a human centric index or a data subject index of all the PII that has been found. So for example, Barbara Franklin Stumpton appears in this data set in three different documents and has two types of PII of hers exposed, including a credit card number and an email address. And by the way, uh, this report is not uh, you know, what you're seeing on the screen. In, in, a, in reality, there are many more columns. It's just a sample of some of the fields that are available. And so in order to produce this, you know, you need to, you know, our AI is able to not only extract out the token level personal information, but also tie it back to the individual. And let me show you how that's done. So let's hop into a document here. So we're going to check out a first level review batch. And what we're seeing here is an email between two employees, Andrea and Mary, and they're talking about a third employee here who is Barbara Stumpton. And so you guys might notice that there's some highlighting going on in the document. And this is annotation that is provided by TextIQ's uh, AI algorithm. So our AI is, is tagging the data subjects in orange and it's tagging the, uh, the potential PII in blue. And so as a user of the platform, my job is to essentially correct the machine. So I can say, maybe if I want to delete any annotation, I would just click on it and exit out. Conversely, if there was some PI that was perhaps missed by the machine, what I would do is I would tag it. So for example, here, Mary's talking about work on her knee done. So what I would do is click, drag and tag it. So work on my knee done appears in the coding panel. And then now what I'm gonna do is click medical information, confirm, and then now work on my knee done is correctly tagged as medical information. And so one of the big advantages um, of using an AI platform such as ours over, for example, you know, just a, a, a document review platform is that any edits that are made actually get fed back into the machine algorithm and helps improve the models. So the fact that I just tagged this phrase here, work on my knee done as medical information helps train the machine to recognize other instances of medical information that are similar to this phrase here. So the next time the machine sees this, it'll actually automatically tag that on its own. Um, it could be something about, you know, maybe, hey, I'm having surgery on my elbow or, or you know, something along those lines. And the more uh, human feedback is provided, the smarter the machine gets. So at the end of the day, the machine will take all the human corrections and use that to train back the model and rerun on all the rest of the documents that haven't yet been reviewed by humans. So that's what we call our continuous uh, learning loop. So let's also look into this first uh, paragraph here to give you guys an example of why and how using AI and machine learning results in a more accurate uh, level of PI detection than say search terms or regular expression or even manual review. So here, Mary's talking about Barbara's information and Mary mentioned to Andrea, can you update Barbara's social security number to this number here? Now you guys might notice a few interesting things about this particular number. And what you might notice is that it's not formatted correctly. It's not in that traditional three to four format. And the second thing you might be noticed is that, you know, you might try to find this using a keyword search like SSN or social security, but that's not actually possible in this example because uh, Mary doesn't mention the word SSN. She doesn't mention social security. She says the word social, but it's actually misspelled. So this would be missed by both regular expressions and search terms. But then how uh, is TextIQ's machine learning algorithm able to detect this? Well, the reason is because we operate on a semantic and contextual level. So we're able to understand this potential PII in the context of the sentence in the paragraph and the document more broadly. So for example, our AI would look at this number and think, all right, it's a nine digit number. It can certainly be an SSN, but then it'll look at the broad sentence and hone in on this word social. And so our natural language processing algorithms are actually able to differentiate 
uh, you know, and disambiguate uh, and identify misspellings. So it would know that, okay, this is meant to be social, but it can then disambiguate further and answer the question, what sort of social are they talking about? Are they talking about a Sunday social? No, they're referring to the phrase social security number. And so with those clues, the AI is able to say, oh, okay, this is you know, most likely a social security number, but our AI is actually able to go one step further and identify this specifically as Barbara's social security number and this address specifically as Barbara's address. And so from the structure and the grammar of the sentence, the AI is actually able to tell which PII within a document belongs to which individual. And that's important because as you see here, there are multiple individuals in this document, such as Mary and some of the PII, such as this special category information and this work on her need, you know, my need done actually belongs to Mary. And by the way, you know, we allow humans to QC um, the entity linkages as well. So to tell the machine that, hey, this work on my need done that belongs to Mary, all I have to do is click Mary, click work on my need done, and then suddenly this entity uh, linkage is connected and the machine remembers that on the back end. So normally what you would have to do to perform all this tagging and, and linkages is manually type into some form or, or copy it onto some other Excel sheet. I'm gonna put Barbara and here's her social and here's her address all typed in and, and manually done. So here, not only is most of that done automatically and in a more accurate way using machine learning, but also the workflow is much more conducive um, to, to, uh, to data breach response. So this is built with data breach response from the ground up. And by the way, um, you know, in case there's interest, we, we also do uh, native redactions. So not as relevant for data breach response, but our same, uh, this same technology is used for, uh, you know, redaction in, you know, privacy redaction and litigation. It's used in DSAR, data subject access request, or GDPR, CCPA compliance. Um, and so you can see how the fundamental technology here of identifying PII and creating this human centered index, uh, and in some cases redacting is, is really core here. Another thing I want to share with you guys is that we also have excellent capability on the structured data side of things. So not only can we process, you know, emails and PDFs and JPEGs and all sorts of unstructured documents, uh, we also excel with, uh, you know, Microsoft Excel and and SQL and all these uh, structured data breach, uh, data uh, database uh, files as well. So in this particular example, you'll see some highlighting uh, of the columns. So what our machine is doing is similar to the email example, our machine is identifying the columns and the Excel uh, and the, the, the cells that contain personal information. And so for example, it's tagged the first name column and the last name column. And as a reviewer, similarly to the email example, my job is to tag columns that have PII that maybe the machine has missed. So maybe I'll tell the machine, hey, this is actually a middle initial column. So I'm gonna click on the title and I'm gonna select the PI type as middle name and confirm. Conversely, maybe the, uh, the AI is overcaptured. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, remove this annotation and department. And so with those four clicks, I'm done with annotating this document. I don't have to extract row by row. Basically the machine is saying everyone in the same row, for example, Mario L. Anthony is tied to this, the PI within this row. So every single person is automatically tied and linked to the PII that belongs to them within the same row. And I don't have to do that manually. And so what we've done is we've taken this process of, you know, uh, uh, an Excel like this, may have taken an entire team of reviewers uh, days, if not weeks to get through. But with our platform, it's literally done in you know, five, 10 seconds. And by the way, I can do uh, redactions on uh, Excels too that are, that are done natively. So really, you know, TextIQ is able to uh, operate on a wide variety of uh, different data documents. We've even uh, you know, done projects on, on uh, where we received the GIF files or uh, audio files, even visual, uh, you know, uh, uh, video files too. So what we can do is extract the text from there and, and run our detectors on that too. And so after this 
um, this QC process has uh, has completed, you know, what we now need to do is run our individual deduplication detectors. And so what that means is, let's say, for example, there could be five Barbara Stumptons in our data set. And maybe some of them are the same people and some of them aren't. And so it's important to be able to understand which Barbara Stumptons are the same individual because we wanna aggregate all their information together. So number one, we don't wanna uh, uh, mail Barbara with a brief notification five different times just because she appears in five different emails. You know, not only is that going to annoy her, it's also going to cost us, you know, five times as much money to send those mail notifications as it should. And so what our AI is doing is a combination of looking at the name similarity algorithms. Um, so for example, we can say Barbara and Barb um, and, and Barbie, you know, all have similar names. And so they might be the same person. Um, but we could also, but another part of that algorithm is looking at the uh, primary identifier overlap. So this is a PI overlap algorithm. So for example, here, Barbara Stumpton and Barb have similar names and they have the same social security numbers. And so what our AI is doing is automatically deduplicating them into the same person. Now, conversely, there's other Barbaras that don't have as strong of a match. But for example, there might be a Barbara Franklin here that has the same credit card number as you know, the, this Barbara in the second document. And so what I can do is uh, you know, merge this person um, you know, manually or unmerge them and basically tell the machine, hey, these three Barbaras are, then this, are now the same person. And by the way, this, this, doesn't have, you know, this doesn't have to be done manually. In fact, uh, in the beginning of every data breach project, uh, what we do is work with a law firm um, or the, 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 uh, you know, the team managing the response process to say, hey, how do you want to uh, set the AI to deduplicate these individuals? Do you want to you know, deduplicate them off of SSN or credit card number or some combination of other things? Uh, it's, it's highly flexible in that regard. And so this process is what enables us to create these individual reports and say, hey, Barbara Stumpton appears in three different documents. Um, so this requires uh, token level PI identification, entity linkages, and individual deduplication, uh, which are very unique um, capabilities to TechSIQ, and we haven't seen in the industry otherwise. And so what this results in is, you know, number one, the law firm does not have to review as many documents because our AI is a lot more precise and casts a tighter net around the documents with PII. Reviewing each document is a lot quicker due to the automation workflow. You no longer have to spend any time on individual deduplication because that process is entirely automated by the machine. And you don't have to spend any time on extraction of PII or compilation of this entity report or this you know, risk, uh, notification report, because this has also been automated by the, um, by our AI. So yeah, um, that is a brief, uh, brief demo of our data breach platform. So please let, uh, let us know in the chat or in the Q&A section if you have any questions. Um, but yeah, Linda, let, let me know if there are any uh, questions that have come through so far. Yeah, we did receive a couple of questions. So one question we've received um, from our email about this was, what makes TechSIQ's data breach solution unique, to, unique in the market? Yeah, that's a fantastic question. So there are a lot of technologies that uh, you know, are being used for data breach right now. So a lot of uh, you know, what other technologies we've seen do is they're able to identify you know, with some degree of accuracy essentially which documents contain PII. So, you know, that it, we consider, you know, one small step in the process. So a lot of other technologies are using a combination of search terms and regular expressions. And as we discussed, not only that does that result in a lot of false positives, it also results in a lot of uh, potentially missed PII. But we're using a natural language processing and machine learning to uh, perform that on a much more targeted and accurate level. But not only that, we have a lot more capability um, than other 
data breach technology. So we're able to do token level PII identification. So for example, not only does this document contain PII, exactly what types does it contain and what is the actual PII, like what is the actual address or what is the actual social security number? And beyond that, we haven't seen any other software uh, sharing.